Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to R Square Technology. I am your host, Ryan, and let's get ready to SolidWorks! In today's Monday Challenge video, we will be continuing with the Motorcycle Truck Bed Slash Trailer Challenge, but instead of working on the frame, we're going to break away and start into the first part of a sub-assembly for a torsion axle. We're going to start with the torsion axle bracket today, so let's jump in. Alright, so this bracket is going to be relatively similar to a real deal, but not exact. Something to also keep in mind is please don't try to build this trailer based on these videos I make. I'm just doing this for demonstration purpose. I can't say that this is going to accurately work out and not fall apart and totally wreck your shit. So, with that, let's start on the right plane this time because we're going to make a profile here. I'm going to go to my sketch tab and I'm going to choose a line. And we'll make this... We're going to do it like such. So, a screw goes to here. Let's just do it this way. I'm going to choose a midpoint line. It's going to make it easier for me in assembly. You'll see why. The thickness of this part. Again, this is where I'm making things up. Which I'm totally fine with. Check this out. Trim entities. Below it, there's something called extend entities. Except I wanted to do this. There we go. Okay. Unselect trim. Now let's see here. G is 2.5 inches. This thickness will be half inch. How about that? Should be pretty thick. I'm gonna make this and this equal. Part thickness stays the same. I want this to be coincident to the origin which fully defines that sketch 10 inches and then of course I want my midplane selection 10 inches save my bracket and let's do this Choose this top plane of, well, top side of this part here. Do a sketch. We'll go back to isometric here for a moment. I do not like the arrangement here. I want to break this normal too. So there's the problem right there, what I did. We'll fix that. There we go. Now that I can get behind. Now, we'll go back up here, bring this normal too. Create a sketch. We'll do a center line. Yeah, there we go. Some bolt holes, through holes, that is. From edge to this. An inch. 
this side to this side. Eight. I'm like this half inch bolt holes. Let's make them uh, five eighths. And again, with dimensions, right? You could do five over eight and arrive at 0 0.625. And also, let me go into my options up here. Document properties, units. And let me change the precision to three decimal places. That way, when you're looking at the dimensions thereof, interesting that did not change. Why didn't you change? Apologies, that was dual dimension link, one above it. There we go. Now everything is going to be triple decimal place. So, In other words, I'm going to make these two equal to, because I want them to change equally, whatever bolt hole size I ch choose. And then I'll make this a reference dimension that's driven. So there you go, by default, precision three decimal place. And we're going to do a feature tab here. We're going to do an extruded cut. And I'm going to do up to surface. Now I definitely want this to be up to surface because if anything gets created here, I don't want these cuts interfering with anything that may be built here. I want to be on the safe side there. So up to surface, this bottom face, select OK. Save that. Then I'm going to hit the space bar and go back and do an isometric view here. Now I'm going to choose this face. Control 8, bring it normal to. And then I'm going to reselect it because I hit escape by accident. Go back into my sketch tab, create a sketch, do a center line. Not doing it at the midpoint this time. A little different area. One point sixty five. Now check this out. So we're gonna make two more bolt holes here. And one thing I'm gonna do actually though, is I'm going to take the absorbed sketch from this last cut extrude, and I'm gonna make it vis visible by right clicking on the sketch, you can hide, right click on it again, click the little seeing eye icon right there, right? And then what I'm gonna do is actually then take, press and hold the control key, select the center point of this circle, select the center point of that. I'm gonna give it a vertical relation. Click OK. Do the same with this one. Control key, selecting those two points. Not a coincident. <laughs> coincident would mean you're trying to snap this all the way up on top here. We don't want that, we want vertical. Because if we're looking at this on face, normal to, right? So clicking this face, control eight to bring it normal to, right? We want the vertical relation, not horizontal. There's no way that could be horizontal because this is not over here on this side being a horizontal plane. So we want our vertical relations there. And then finally, I'm gonna press my center scroll wheel of my mouse to rotate back. I'm actually going to take select press control select the edge of this cut extrude feature select this select this oh, let me back out Let's see if it's going to grab it for me sketch three it might it's fighting me on this it's okay 
because they're not on the same plane this way, it's not going to allow it. That's fine. We'll add our dimension in a 0.625. Select both of these because we want them to change. And then we want to do another feature. Shoot a cut and up to surface. Select the contours I want. Oh, you're cutting it in half. You shouldn't be. Matter of fact. Let's select it this way. Our up to surface is here. All right, so now we got our bolt holes. So I'm going to hide the top sketch. Don't need it anymore. Save it. And then what we're going to do is let's add some chamfers here. So check this out, a chamfer. I want that whole face, just this edge right there, beautiful. And an inch, give or take, looks good enough. Save that spacebar and bring it back isometric here. Then let us add our fillets to here. <laughs> so it all works. I'll do this random point three nine three seven zero zero seven nine. I don't know. I almost feel like this is some kind of developer's like Easter egg. Don't know why it'll randomly generate that. Somebody probably does. You all at Basalt Systems definitely know why it does. And you've decided to leave it there. This has been in there for... Since 2020 version. Quarter inch radius. Save that. And then our final thing we're going to do here... Let's reverse that. Now check this out, I'm gonna show you something. So you've made a feature, and then you realize, oh, I want to do something before that feature. Now keep in mind, you're gonna to need to know what's going to change, because it could cause subsequent errors. But well, check this out. In the feature tree, you have this line. This line here is not for decoration. It's actually a rollback line, right? So if you hover over it, you're gonna notice this little hand. So if I click and drag backwards, it rolls back to before that feature, but the feature is not deleted. It's still there. So if I roll it forward, there it is. There it isn't. Now what I want to do is I want to keep that there. I don't want to redo that whole feature I just did, but I want to add a feature before it. So one method is to do a rollback. Now granted, again, depending on what you do, if you roll back, put a feature in and roll it forward, if certain geometric conditions fall out of place, you could end up with an error. So use with caution. So from here I'm going to go into the sketch tab. I'm going to select this face, control 8 to bring it normal to, choose a sketch, and I'm going to do a corner to corner rectangle, say there, super tiny. It's fine. Just take one of the edges and make it bigger. From here, let's see, one inch plus 2.5, it's 3.5, and this here, let's see how this works out, it's going to be right at the hole. Ah, scratch that, new plan. Create a center line here. There we 
we go. She's a center point rectangle. Okie day. This is going to be 2.5. cut with that and up to surface here now let's observe something and see if it maintains itself it did in fact do that but cut into there so let's do a little bit of mod here in this first sketch we're gonna make this uh, 375 instead Looks a little bit better that way. Change our fillets to... Mm, let's keep those at a quarter inch. Again, not super accurate. Then what I'm gonna do here, little fillets in this. And we will make those 0.03125. Let's go backwards to this fillet here for a moment. Let's see if it likes that. It's cutting through too much of it still. Well then, if you want to be tricky like that. I will just do this. And then from there, re-edit 0.25. There we go. I can go with that. Bring it isometric. Hide that plane there. And this is going to be our torsion axle bracket. That's gonna mount the whole torsion axle to the frame. And as all I have for you in this video, thank you for watching. Stay tuned next Monday. We'll continue more of the torsion axle subassembly. And eventually we're gonna bring this all together into a trailer. So stay tuned. Take care.